Hello there, Ray here, and behind me is an infinitely automatic machine that we made to sort out the armor pieces separately. So helmets can be separated away from the chest plates. So this is the input chest right here. This is where you can put in your different pieces of armor. So I'm just going to put a full set of diamond in here. And the thing is going to sort them out. And the outputs are here. So this one's going to contain all the helmets once done. This one's going to do chest plates. This one's going to do leggings. And this one's going to do boots. The system is currently running right now. It's sorting each of the pieces out. It uses some really cool mechanics and it took tons of hours of designing. And we built this up during our snapshot streams every Wednesday and Friday. So make sure to turn on your notifications as well as follow me on Twitter and our community Discord. Because we always come across crazy glitches and design really cool machines like this one here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So there's our diamond helmet. We got our diamond chest plate diamond leggings in there as well as our diamond boots. So we were able to put in random pieces of armor and it's going to separate them according to the different slots on the player. So head slot, chest slot, legging slot as well as boot slot. It doesn't do the offhand or the shield slot as armor stands no longer are able to have shields placed onto them even using dispensers. Now the machine looks very similar to the previous design. This design here that I showed you guys earlier will sort out just random stuff, so something like this, and it'll end up just putting all the different pieces of armor into a single chest. So the new machine that we design is going to actually take something like this, a chest full of random armor pieces, and then sort them according to what slot they go onto the player. So it's a more refined process of sorting. And we designed this according to a comment by TireX as well as one of the project members, Johnny595. Both of them suggested trying to go ahead and sort out the individual pieces instead of just putting them all into a single chest. Now our first design is this right here. Yes, this crazy thing it took us about three hours to design. It does work. The way it works is actually pretty interesting. Essentially what we do is we kind of take one piece at a time and test it to see if it works. The very first station up here is going to test to see if the new armor piece that it's putting into the system is going to be a helmet. So this is where you put your random pieces. Notice we've got helmet pieces, chest pieces, leggings, as well as boots. So at this point we have no clue what the armor piece is. Because there's no player here looking at the system, this thing is all done automatically. And the helmet piece is by far the easiest. Essentially what we do is we put an armor stand into the system, and then we immediately put a pumpkin onto it. Then we go ahead and test one of our random pieces over here. If it's any piece except for a helmet piece, it will be applied to the armor stand. But if it's a helmet piece, it can't go onto the armor stand since it already has a pumpkin on it. Therefore, it will just fly out in front of the dispenser and be picked up by this hopper. So if I go ahead and press this button, it's going to go kind of fast, but you'll be able to see all this happening. And notice also when it arrived over here, it was immediately destroyed using this arrow coming from a dispenser. Now there's currently a bug in the game where it actually can dispense two pumpkins every time it's powered instead of just one when there's an armor stand in front of it, which is probably not intended. So you can probably see the two pumpkins being thrown out. Yeah, it's only powered once, but two pumpkins end up getting dispensed from this dispenser here. So if it was a helmet piece, then it ends up in this barrel over here, which is labeled helmets. You can see it didn't end up in there. So then what we do is we kind of take that piece and continue moving it throughout the system. And we kind of have hoppers that pick up the different pieces and move them on to another station. So there's a whole bunch of these little stations that kind of test each one. What kind of makes the system kind of bulky is we're also taking any items that we use that can be recycled. So like this here is the armor stands as well as the pumpkins. They both are getting sorted by these sorting systems and they're getting recycled back to the top so we can reuse them. Then we're left with the random piece once again that ends up here and then we test it. Now the pumpkin piece is very easy to test because you can sort pumpkins away from all armor pieces just by using a normal stackable sorter like we have here. But then it starts getting really tricky as we don't have that same luxury to do with chest plates. So what we do is we have pre-made chest plates which are going to be applied onto the armor stand very similar to as the pumpkin was applied to the armor stand prior to putting our random piece on it. So we'll dispense out a armor stand, we'll apply a, a chest piece that we know is a chest piece because it'll come from this which is only them. Then we'll apply our random piece, which comes from over here. And if this dispenser tries to dispense it onto this piece, it's not going to be able to. And therefore it's going to fall into this hopper and this is going to collect our chest pieces. But the problem comes if this dispenser dispenses a different random piece, which let's say turns out to be leggings. Then leggings are applied onto our armor stand and then we can move it into the next section 
But when we break down this armor stand, we're going to be left with a chest piece and leggings with neither of them sorted away from each other. So let's just see what exactly happens. We'll go past this situation here. You can see it working very quickly. And the pieces were all placed into here. And this is where the real brains occur. In this dispenser here, we could have any random piece except for a helmet piece. But we actually know what's going to be in the dispenser. So since there was an armor stand that had a known chest plate on it, as well as one unknown item. When we break it, we know that there is going to be at least one armor stand and one chest piece plus one unknown item. So our goal is to first separate the chest piece away from the leggings. And the way that we do this is we only try to put one of these onto the armor stand. So we got a very similar setup as before where we put down a armor stand. We also put down a chest plate on it. But this time, instead, we just dispense one of them. So if the chest plate tries to go onto the armor stand, it's going to fail and end up down here in this hopper. Once that occurs, we automatically know whatever is left is not a chest plate. We know it's either leggings or boots. And at that point, we don't try to dispense it onto the armor stand. Instead, we pull it out underneath. So we have some circuitry in the back, which kind of does that. And it will pull all the things which are leggings or boots over here into this barrel here. Then the chest plates are also separated and they are piped back around into the top so we can reuse them during the sorting system. In the same module here, we could also have a chance that the leggings try to get placed on it first, in which case we just go ahead and break down the whole armor stand and move all the pieces back into the system in the beginning game and we just keep trying it until the dispenser tries to apply the chest plate first, since dispensers have a random chance of dispensing each item in the dispenser. So everything that kind of comes out of this module we know is either leggings or boots and they go piped around over here. We have another module here. This module is a little bit different as we kind of have a cool way of sorting away the boots that we use during the sorting system. So up there we were using pumpkins and we could easily remove the pumpkins and reuse them. Down here we use something different but it's really cool. This is an idea by Cheater Codes. He was on helping us build this up and he suggested using Frostwalker boots to make it easier to sort them away from the normal boots that come into the system. So we do kind of a similar thing where we put an armor stand into the system and we apply a known armor piece onto it. In this case it's going to be a known piece which is going to be Frostwalker boots. That's going to be applied to it. Then over here we're going to have a random piece. It's either going to be in leggings or boots. That's all we're left with. First, if it's boots, then the boots are going to fall down and not be able to be put onto armor stand and end up in this hopper here. And they'll end up in this chest over here or this barrel. But if it is leggings, then the leggings will be applied to it. And then we have to move the armor stand over here, break it, and then still separate the leggings from the boots. So we can watch this happening. If we go over here, and power it, it's gonna go really quickly. And everything ended up down here. And this system is where we can separate the known piece, which is the Frostwalker boots, away from the leggings. So this piece here was made by Cheater Codes. And if I can find the button, <laughs> okay, here's the button. So in our system, we're going to have an armor stand, and we're also going to have leggings plus Frostwalker boots. So what we're trying to do in this system is separate the two. So it's going to apply either the leggings or the boots onto an armor stand. Then it's going to push it with this piston over here. And when it's being pushed, it's going to either make this water freeze over because it has frost walking and champion on it. Or if it's just a normal leggings, it's going to do nothing. And depending on what the outcome is, we can detect it from over here. And then we can decide if we need to let it drop straight down or push it over to be broken off. So if it goes straight down, it's going to be leggings. And if it goes... Off to the side, it's going to be Frostwalker boots, and then we're going to send the Frostwalker boots back up to the top. So let's go ahead and push the button, and we can watch it working. So that one just has some normal leggings on it. Push it again. That one has Frostwalker boots on it. And you can kind of hear the system back here working. So at the end of the system, you're left with a bunch of different chests throughout the system that have the boots, the leggings, the chest plate, as well as the helmets. So if they were all in one area, it'd look kind of like this. All the leggings in one, all the boots, helmets, and all the chest plates. You can see they're all separated out. Like I said, it took us three hours to build this up. And Johnny595 was helping as well as Cheater Codes. And we had help from the other viewers as well. Now after almost getting this completely finished, Cheater Code recognized that when he was destroying the armor stands, the pieces coming off the armor stand were ending up in the hoppers in the same order. 
So we can see this occurring. If we go ahead and have an armor set here, we put all the different pieces on him, including we need some legs for this guy as well. Now, if we go ahead and we drop an arrow onto it, dispense it, and then break it off, you can see all the pieces there. We go ahead and unlock this hopper. Pieces are going to go in exactly as you kind of see them on the player with the boots, then the leggings, then the chest plate, and then the helmet. And we went ahead and we tested this several times and it works consistently. If the armor sand gets picked up as well, the armor sand will actually come in first before anything else. It doesn't matter what order you put these pieces onto the armor stand. When they are broken, they're going to end up in the hopper at the exact same time. So we break this redstone once again. And you can see the armor piece, if it would get picked up, then it's going to be first. And then we get the exact same order, don't matter what type of armor, doesn't matter if it's enchantment or durability, they always end up in the same order. And after discovering this, we came up with a couple cool ideas on how to sort armor. So I built up this design. It is actually really small and does the exact same thing as that really big one over there. And it's considerably more easier to understand. So in this system, we really don't move the armor stand that much. Right in here is the armor stand that we use and we only move them from here to over here and then back again. So the way that my new system here works is that we first actually put on the unknown item. So in this case, it is some diamond boots. That's different than the system over there where we kind of start out with a known item. Then after we got the unknown piece on, then we one by one put every other piece onto the armor stand. So in the system, we have a known set of armor. It's in the same order that we've seen before where it lands into the hopper with boots in the front and helm at the back. And as we pull these out of this hopper, we're going to keep that same order. So these boots are going to be piped up here and try to be applied onto the armor stand. And if they fail, what it's going to end up doing is putting the boots inside of this hopper minecart. So it's going to shoot out hopper minecart. It's going to pick them very quickly. Then it's going to be pushed down into this hopper system here, which is going to try to send the armor piece into each of these chests. But they're currently being locked behind with some redstone dust. And they're actually being locked according to how many items are left in the system. This is a really cool way I came up with to kind of link the different armor pieces with whichever are left. So if we go ahead and try to use these diamond boots onto the armor stand, they're going to leave this hopper. And this will allow it so that this redstone line becomes shorter. And any boots that do fail in the system will end up going into this hopper here, since it's no longer locked, and end up in the boot storage. Then the system is going to apply the next piece. So it's going to try to apply the leggings onto it. In this case, it would succeed. But if it would fail, then you can see that now more of the hoppers are unlocked and this one here is unlocked so that any piece that comes by is going to fall into this one and I'll never make it into this one as this hopper is before that one. And any other hoppers in front of that one are still currently locked. And this way we can separate the leggings. And this system continues onwards, then we try to apply the chest play onto it and if it fails, then it end up into a different hopper. And the last one we tried to do is apply the helmet to it. And if it fails, ends up into a hopper over there. Also notice that once all the pieces are missing, the armor stands are automatically moved over into this infinitely automatic system to destroy armor stands and get back the armor as well as the armor stand itself. That way we can keep the system infinitely automatic and won't use up any resources. So let me go ahead and just fix this once again so that it's ready to be run. We just need to put the pieces in just like this. And this armor stand always needs to have at least one piece on it when it starts. And let me go ahead and throw a piece in here and we can kind of just watch it. You can kind of see the clock working and it's trying to apply one piece at a time, kind of testing it. We need a little bit of delay between testing each piece to make sure that the pieces have time to reach the very farthest hopper, which is over here, because it takes a little time for items to travel through these hoppers. And the piece that we sorted out was a helmet, so we got another diamond helmet in there. But the system is also kind of always behind one piece because one piece is always sitting on this armor piece. So you don't get it back until the system runs again. And also one set of armor is kept down here. So that means is you kind of have to run the system twice if you're trying to get the exact piece back. And I can illustrate this here. If I go ahead and this is your input, let's say you just throw in an entire set of leather armor. So you do a helmet, you do a chest plate, leggings, as well as boots. The system is going to take in all the pieces and they will eventually make it to these chests over here. But first the system is actually going to use those for the next round of testing. So notice in the next round of testing we got leather boots right here. So those are leather boots were being used. And you'll see the next time that we use we're going to use another piece. So now we got two pieces of leather that are being used on our armor stand. 
and it's slowly going to switch over the armor stand to use all our new pieces. Now we got three pieces of leather on it. And then the last one you can see there is actually another piece of leather armor, which is right there. So the whole leather suit that we stuck in there, we got the chest plate there, and then we got the other pieces right here. But eventually, when the next time you use it, they would come and be put into the different chest over there, all sorted out perfectly. And the advantage of doing that is it makes the system really small, as I'm just looping the arm pieces down, over, and up. They just make this small little circuit here. And you don't have to kind of like pipe them all the way around in weird spots. The one thing we do have to kind of pipe back to the top is the armor stands. So over here we have a sorter which is sorting out the armor stands and they're just being sent back up here. They're being put into this dispenser right here. Redstone wise, there's not that much redstone to it. Most of the redstone just kind of connects the different pieces to make it smart. So we have some comparators coming out of here that just detects if there's still armor pieces in here, and if there is still some, it's going to run this little clock here, and this is just going to send them up one at a time into the armor stand. But currently this comparator is being locked by the system over here, which just detects to see if we have any unknown pieces in the system. So we don't want to run this all the time, only when we actually have some pieces to be sorted out, and that's what this comparator is doing. So if I would put a piece into this chest here, it's going to end up in there, and it's going to start running the system. We also have a comparator coming out this end, which is the one that is powering all these hoppers over here. And that just makes sure that the, each of the pieces end up in the correct chest. We also run some power around. After we get done doing an entire testing of one item, we go around here and we kind of reset the system so it's ready for any new pieces that come into the system. We got three main things going on here. We have a piston which just pushes the armor stand over to this area over here where it can be hit by this skeleton golem setup. Same setup as I showed you guys in the armor sorter machine over there. You have a skeleton, he is shooting through some snow layers, and also trying to shoot through some soul sand as well as some bubble calls, which are pulling the arrows downwards so they don't hit the iron golem. Also, when the armor pieces get pushed over, we want to make sure that when they break off, none of the pieces kind of get flung off to any of the sides. And that's where we have the tall snow layers as well as soul sand on this side. Over on this side, we keep the glass here extended making just a small cube for the armor pieces to land on and therefore they get picked up by this hopper and not accidentally picked up by this hopper minecart which is right over here. Then after the armor stand is broken we can detect that and we retract the piston once again and we also dispense a new armor stand as well as a new piece that is unknown that we want to be sorted. So you can kind of see how the system starts out. We already got an armor stand down with an unknown piece in it. We also had to keep the hopper minecart far away from here because if items even get kind of close to this edge here and the hopper is on that side but close to the edge, it will also be able to pick up these items even though they're not touching. So we found the perfect block to keep the minecart just the right distance away, which is actually an extended piston. So this piston head here, the thickness of this head is good enough to keep the minecart hitbox from getting too close to over here. And since these pistons come in and kind of push all this, including armor stand and the minecart over here, we need to make sure that the minecart wouldn't get pushed over here as well, or when it retracts, we don't want it to end up like over here. So it's slightly pushed into the edge of this piston, so it clips on either side, so it can't end up in either of those places. And we'll stay right here. It also allows it to hang over just a little bit so that this hopper here will take any items which are inside of it and then start putting them into the sorters down below. The entire contraption is pretty compact. There's really not that much to it. The redstone piece over here just goes into a pulse shortener, which just pulses these item elevators for a short period of time to get the armor pieces from here all the way up to there. And also make sure it's only to let one armor piece out at a time. And at the very bottom here is just the redstone to go to this armor stand item filter. I was actually really surprised at how simple this turned out to be, but it was a long road to get this working. I think we worked on this one, including that one, probably a total of five or six hours during our stream. But I'm really impressed by the outcome, and I really had a lot of fun designing this up. It really made me think differently than I normally do. As we ran into some problems to do with like hoppers pulling items out, even though they were locked, which is just the nature of hoppers, so we had to kind of make it a little bigger than what we wanted to, but in the end, it works perfect. If you want to, you could just use the dispensers and arrows like we did over there. But with a skeleton in here and making sure that it is name tag or holding some type of items, we can have it so that the skeleton will be like an infinite arrow source. We don't have to supply any more arrows. 
Armor stands are also recycled, so is the armor, and therefore it is an infinitely automatic machine. As once built up, it can continue working without any new input from the player. I really enjoyed the challenge of building this up during the snapshot stream. Thanks to everyone who joined the stream, as well as hopped onto the server, messed around with the newest snapshot. It's also a great time to ask me questions or just chat with me, as the streams are pretty chill. And we do the snapshot streams every Wednesday and Friday, and we do pro deck streams every Saturday and Sunday. So I'd love to see all you guys there. Hope you guys really enjoy this machine, and if you do, be sure to go ahead and leave a like as well as share this with others, as it is such a unique device. And if you'd like to take a better look at this machine so you can build it up in your very own world, or any of the other contraptions that we have around here, I will provide the world download down below. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Bye bye!